Hey guys, back with another video. In this one, we will learn how to use the error function to evaluate some linear equations. And to start off, I will define the error function. We use three letters to denote it. It is E, R, F, error function of x. And this is equal to 2 over the square root of pi times the integral from 0 to x of e to the minus t squared dt. Now it's important that we realize that this is a function of x and not of t. So I will draw the, the function e to the minus t squared here, and this is with respect to t on the x-axis. It looks sort of like a bell curve. And we will choose, well we, we know this is 0, and we will choose some value of x, and we will evaluate the integral underneath or rather the area underneath this curve from zero to whatever value we choose x. And that is what the error function is evaluating. And of course, it's taking this area and it's multiplying it by two over the square root of pi. Now let's look at an, at an example of a differential equation. So we have for our first example, dy dx is equal to two x y plus one. And so I'm going to assume that you already know how to solve a linear equation that you've watched my last video. If you haven't, go give that video a quick watch and then you'll be more prepared for the technique that I will do right now. So we will move the 2xy to the left-hand side. We get dy dx minus 2xy is equal to 1. Now we know that our p of x is equal to minus 2x. And if we take the integral of minus 2x dx, what we get is minus x squared. Now, our integrating factor, mu of x, will equal e to the minus x squared. And if we, if we multiply e to the minus x squared, our integrating factor, so e to the minus x squared times y, and we take the derivative of this, and we know that this will equal e to the minus x squared times our right hand side, which is just one. Now, let us, let us take the integral of both sides. So we will take the integral, and normally when we take an integral, we will take the indefinite integral. But in this case, what we will do is we will realize that on the right hand side, we have the integral of e to the minus x squared dx. And this is not an integral that we can readily evaluate because it is not an elementary function. So what we will do instead is we will define some of our bounds. We will say, okay, well, let's rewrite this. We will take the integral from zero to x of both sides. So we get d, and now we can't do d dx. We have to choose some other variable. And as long as we're consistent, we'll be fine. So that's d dx of e to the minus t squared times y, and remember that y here is a function of t. I'll just write it so we don't forget. And this is with respect to t. And we will take the integral similar, similarly on the right-hand side of 0 to x of e to the minus t squared dt. Now, I did forget to write one thing. This differential equation, we do have an initial condition, which is going to be y of 0 equals 1. And it's an initial value problem, and we need that initial condition to be satisfied. So now when we evaluate the integrals, well, the, the d dt and the dt will cancel out, and we will have e to the minus t squared times y, and this is being evaluated from 0 to x. And this is equal to, well, this looks very similar to the error function that we defined above, except the error function has a 2 over the square root of pi. So what we can do is we can say, well, if that has the 2 over the square root of pi being multiplied by it, we can actually just multiply by the square root of pi over 2, and then multiply by 2 over the square root of pi, and these two cancel out to be 1. And then we can multiply this by the integral from 0 to x of e to the minus t squared dt. If we plug in our bounds of integration on the left-hand side, then what we get is we get e to the minus x squared times y, and y is just a function of x. And this will be minus e to the 
minus 0 squared, which will be 0, times y of 0. And this will be equal to, well, we have already defined the right side of, of the right-hand equation as the error function of x. That is what we defined in the beginning of the video. So this will equal the square root of pi over 2 times the error function of x. And to satisfy our initial condition, we know that y of 0 is equal to 1. y of 0 is equal to 1. And e to the 0 is also equal to 1. So this will equal 1. And if we add that over, then we get e to the minus x squared times y is equal to root pi over 2 times the error function of x plus 1. Now multiplying both sides by e to the positive x squared, it will cancel out the e to the minus x squared on the left hand side. And then what we are left with as the solution to our initial value problem, note there are no plus c's or constants of integration because we have already solved for our, our initial condition. We have e to the x squared times root pi over 2 times the error function of x plus 1. And this is the solution to our differential equation. Now the error function of x is very, it's a very succinct way of writing the large integral. Um, it makes it a lot easier and a lot more neat for us to write. In the next video, I will have another example. We will go over a very similar function known as the complementary error function. But I hope that you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below, and I will see you in the next video.